Hey, welcome, thanks for stopping by. So gesso, calcium carbonate, is a genetic name for a variety of different minerals found all over the world. It's found in the shells of uh, marine animals. It's an active component in agricultural lime. It's a component of limestone, marble, chalk, gypsum, and precipitated chalk. So, if that's confused you, I hope this lesson is going to explain a lot. <laughs> so, there we go. <laughs> And, um, and thank you very much for joining me in the studio. Yes, well, Jesso, well, well I, this is a, 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 a video I wanted to do for quite a while now. I've covered this subject a few times. I want to say hello to everybody that's um, currently in, in the um, chat room. So let's just pop over there very quickly and say hello to everybody. That's important. So we've got Mark. Hello, Mark. Hello, Katz Gallery. We've got um, Vanessa Schofield. Hello, Vanessa. I'm going to cover... Um, Clear Gesso in just a minute. Angela Parker, uh, hi there. And, um, and Jeffrey Walburn, chalks away. Yes, chalks away, old chap. Okay, so over the bridge and let's get on to this lesson. So why do we use Gessos? Um, is there any need to, 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 to prime already primed Gesso panels? There's a variety of different um, things in the stores these days from all these canvases. I'll go through that in a second. And um, one of the biggest questions I get is that um, why do I have to prime an already gessoed canvas? Not all canvases and, 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 and canvas panels and canvases you get in uh, in the shops these days are gessoed. Gesso is a totally different beast to primer. I just want to explain that in a little bit. So um, I am watching the stream, everybody, but um, I'm, I'm, I'll be coming back to that in one second. But I I want to I want to go on to. Uh, a little a little thing that I did in an art shop the other day. And before I do that, I want to do a disclaimer. I'm not going to slate any particular company. Um, all I want to say is that um, I just happened to be one particular supplier in this company, in, in this shop I was in. So I do apologize. But I'm, I'm having a look at all canvases, all panels, um, and all um, canvas rolls and all that type of stuff. So I'm just making sure that everything is streaming okay here. And let's carry on to the video. As you can see, there is a wide variety of canvases on the shelves these days. And um, from box canvases to just canvas panels to canvas rolls, the mind boggles. It absolutely um, is surprising how, how much stuff is there. Um, There we go. Sorry about I, I had a bit of a problem with the with the stream then. So, so let me just there we go. Let me just silence that because I can hear myself talking and this and it's quite disconcerting really. So yeah, so on the back of these canvases you can see that um that there's a little information and it's important that we read this information because it tells you what's on the canvas. So um this one says ideal for oil and acrylic. Well brilliant stuff. Uh, it's versatile, it's suitable for mixed medias, uh, collage, impasso, heavy textures. Uh, it's back stapled with a clean edge for painting on the sides. It's triply primed and ready to use. Um, it's a medium grain, that means the texture of the canvas um, is basically a medium grain and is 100% acid free and uh, for cotton durability. And as we move on to the, 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 the um, the canvas is, I want to bring your attention to this little puppy that I found. Um, this is one of the cheapest ranges. And if you look right down just below the 16, and just under the first gray box, you'll see a big dirty mark actually on the canvas. That is underneath the plastic. So that means there's um, some dirt, some grime. There's, there could be silicone on there. This could be grease. It could be absolutely anything under that plastic. So don't assume that just because you're buying a canvas that's that's wrapped and pre-primed that it's not actually got anything wrong with it. So um, I just want to have, have a look at this one. This, this is one I bought the other day in, in the shop and I, I've noticed on this, it's got little, little tiny perforations all the way down the sides. And, um, and I don't know why there's little tiny perforations, there's little holes all the way down in there. Um, I don't know what's happened. So there's going to be dust in there. And also, the back of the canvas somewhere is actually ripped. There we go. So that's ripped. So that's going to allow dust to go in there. Um, 
so when we take this plastic off don't assume for any any minute that that's ready to be painted on because if we do that what's going to happen is we're going to have trouble with paint lift and and paint flaking and so it's always important that you 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 prime your canvas no matter whether you use a primer or whether you use an actual gesso it's very very important uh, that we do that so looking at the back of that canvas it it actually says it's a 10 by 8 canvas and it says medium grain cotton surface ideal for all techniques including heavy applications of color it's stretched by hand for correct tension and tailored corners you can make these yourself really easily i'll show you how to do that in another video it's triple coated using acid free sizing and two coats of highly pigmented primer formulated by the company that actually produces this panel and it's balanced absorbency and tooth prevents sinking of oil colors uh, and, and improve adhesion so what happens with these boards is that if you were using oil paint and it's a bit thin and it's going to permeate it is actually going to permeate the canvas and get into that board and that board is going to ex expand and just blow so be very careful when you're using um oil, uh, oils on these make sure that um, they're a little bit thicker than you would normally use um, don't forget this is just hardboard this is just compressed hardwood that's been sealed and then covered in a canvas i'll show you how to make these quite simply i wouldn't say cheaply because hey these, these are only i only paid like one pound fifty for this so it's not really worth you you making these but you can if you want to you can um okay so let's let's skip on let's skip on the video and um look at a a, a, a more uh, higher grade canvas then this is this is a higher grade canvas this is a little bit more expensive i think this canvas was in about the 15 or 20 pound mark and as you can see on the back of that it says warp resistant is kiln dried solid wood stretcher bars they're, they're really good um solid bars on there and they, they've also got uh, bars going across the center as well um it's highly pigmented with titanium dioxide gesso primer for superior coverage and performance it's hand stretched uh, for the best tension. Again, it has tailored corners. Um, it's back stapled with folded uncut corners. It's all, it, they state on their archival. So this is a really good um, uh, um, canvas that you can buy in just a general art store. Um, a little bit pricey, hey, but you know, if you want the best building blocks, you're gonna have to buy the best bricks. And, um, and that's used for acrylics and oil paints as well. So. Yeah, that's just a, another thing you want to think about. Um, so spend a little bit more money on your canvases, but it's very important that you gesso these, even those, because you don't know what's on them. Um, a lot of rolled canvases have um, a coating of silicone to stop the canvas sticking together. So when you, if you buy even a roll of canvas, be very careful. You've got to prime it correctly, otherwise you're going to get a lot of paint lift. So let's have a look at the. Um, Let's have a look at the um, the uh, the chat. <laughs> Getting confused with all these buttons. <laughs> um, well, my local store doesn't have that many options for canvases, uh, says Todd. And hi, Clive and Jane from Sheffield. Hello, Paul Smith. Yeah, Jesso uh, Jesso's not with me. <laughs> Jane's not with me tonight. So I, uh, that's why I'm getting a bit confused in here. But um, hello from Southern California. Um, Ah, Cameron, I know Ella Mae Powell. Oh, you know my granddaughter. Well done. <laughs> so um, let's have a look at the video again. Let's go back and have a look at some of the gesso that we can actually buy in the stores. And um, and as you can see, uh, it comes in um, one litre or 2.5 litre tubs. Yeah, and I've seen them in bigger tubs again. And it's not cheap stuff. Uh, traditionally black gesso or white gesso is used um, but you can add colors to them for a ground as you've seen me do on many a, a, a occasion um, in the studio um, but why not make your own have a look in the iCards in the top right hand corner of the video and you'll see some easy uh, recipes in there using PVA glue some chalk and um, some household emulsion paint yes that's all you need so why go and spend loads of money on 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 gessos and things and that also takes me on to clear gesso again clear gesso is um something that's used a lot in mixed medias um it's used uh traditionally on um like um mdf boards um uh masonette boards hardboards um wooden panels plywoods 
um, if you don't want any color. It's, it just dries clear. So all you've got is um, a primer with just a rough texture on it. So that gives the paint the, the properties of adhesion. You can add a little bit of color to it. So if you want to make it into a ground, you can add uh, traditionally like a burnt umber or something like that. Just looking over my shoulder, just making sure that um, everything is working okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's clear gesso. And um, you, you might say to yourself, well, can, can I make clear gesso? Well, you certainly can if I can get this video booted up. <laughs> but some of the tools you're going to need um, before you even start um, to um, stretch uh, a canvas and correctly stretch it and make it nice and taut and also to put a, a, a primer on there correctly. You can use one coat of gesso. I traditionally use three. Um, and the, the, what I'm going to show you here now is a way to get your canvas absolutely crystal smooth if you want to do a portrait. Now, this is an old video that I, I produced um, way back um, when I, I had I was filming on just a little camera. <laughs> None of these big HD cameras that we've got in the studio now. So without further ado, let's have a look at the tools. So there's a hairdryer there for drying your gesso. You can put the, dry, the, the gesso um, panel against the radiator. Um, there's some aluminum oxide or sandpaper. Sandpaper is just basically sand um, glued to a paper which tends to come off and leave little particles of sand everywhere so that's not that's not exactly what you want um, so aluminium oxide is the green paper if you, you'll see that in any DIY store so I'll just ask for aluminium oxide and that, that, that stays put so you can use it as a, a, a nice smooth sander um, there's a tile the blue thing there is what they use for putting grout in tiles on walls um, which is great for actually smoothing down the gesso actually on your um, on your uh, painting um, there's a roller there as well it's a paint roller a little tiny paint roller and there's a little hammer for knocking in the keys which I'll explain in a second there's also a, a dusting brush there for dusting off the, the dust any dust there and there's two paint brushes for applying the gesso so without further ado let's have a look um, and this is the back of the canvas traditionally and this is a good canvas as you can see but if you look at the back of the canvas you can see it's a slightly darker color so that means it's a it's a good it's a good canvas um and the stretcher bars there i've got little holes on the sides and those little things that i got in my hand are called keys and these go into the corner in a specific way to enable us to stretch the canvas and get it taut ready for the painting I'm just taking a little sip of water because I'm a little bit dehydrated after all that wine. <laughs> Drink responsibly. Yes, so have a look at the key. You can see the flat edge goes in down on the side on the flat. The flat edge, the longer edge then goes to the edge. And you just put those little keys in all the way around in their corresponding little slots. Some of these keys are a little bit thicker than others, some are a bit thinner. Um, it's just depending on the quality of the canvas, but always have a few of them spare. And we're going to be knocking them in just very gently. You don't need to knock them in too hard, just so we can tension up. Just so we can tension up the um, the canvas. You can see this is the the studio when I first built it. There's a little fish tank in the corner there. I forgot I had that. <laughs> but just tension the canvas up until you get it like a drum. And how I test it is I get my th my finger and I just give it a little flick. Now I'm checking for little lumps and bumps. You'll find there's um, lumps and bumps on the canvas sometimes. So don't assume that when you when you buy a canvas, it's ready for painting because it isn't. So really, there could be a little bit of imperfections in there. There could be there could be silicone marks on there. You don't know what's on there. Um, there could be little dents in that you need to remove. Um, so just treat it, treat your canvas. Like I, 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 we're talking about canvases now. Just treat your canvas like as if. It's your foundation for your house, because if you haven't got the foundation correct, then your paint is not going to stand up. Your paint is not going to be archival. And this is why we go through these processes. And if you can make your own gessos, then you can use that money that you would be spending on gessos um, to buy more higher quality paints. So if everybody wins, the companies win because you were buying the artist quality paints. You were winning because you were you were gessoing things yourself. And you know that the, the building blocks that you put in place are, are going to be good and if you if you're, you're looking for archival work you've got to do this now i did have one person say well i i didn't gesso my canvas and my and, and i painted without any gesso how wonderful am i yes you are a very wonderful person 
But who knows in four, two or three years time if that paint's going to flake. I'd rather not take a chance. Chance. You don't have to gesso canvases if you don't want to, if you feel as if you don't need to. This is my opinion. I'd rather, I'd rather know that I'm safe than sorry. Be safe rather than sorry. That's my argument. So we're looking at the canvas. I'm checking. And never use your fingertips. Always use the back of your finger if you can, because fingertips, as you can see, are going to leave grease marks. Always use the back of your finger like that. Because you don't want grease marks on your nicely, nicely prepared canvas. Otherwise, it's just going to cause you problems. So just run the back of your finger over. So we're using the aluminium oxide, um, left to right. And then we're going to go up and down very, very gently, just to remove any little lumps and bumps, any little blemishes that are there. When we check in the canvas as we're doing that, and this is going to be prepared um, for a portrait that I did a while ago. Um, but we, we, we can just get away with just one or two coats of gesso. I'll explain what I'm doing in a minute. Now I'm going to be dusting the surface off just to get rid of the, the little bits of um, contaminants that's on there. I'm just giving a little tap, make sure there is absolutely nothing on there. That, that is nice and prepared now and ready for gesso. And I'm just going to brush on a gesso as that. There you go. So if you're just doing a traditional painting, one or two coats like this is fine. We don't need to do the next stage. Unless you want a very, very smooth surface, then you can go on to what I'm going to be doing after this because this is what I do when I'm doing a portrait, uh, a pet portrait or um, a, a people portrait even. But this is this is a process I actually go through. So if you're just using, just for a normal painting, just two or three coats like that, making sure there's no hairs, as you, like you see, I could trap the hair there then, and um, and that's that's fine. That's all you need to do. You can dry that off with a hairdryer, put it next to a radiator. Um, normally takes about 20 minutes for that to dry. Um, I'd leave it an hour just to be on the safe side if, if, if you want to be safe because you don't want to capture moisture underneath the acrylic because acrylic dries um, with a plastic sheen. It is, acrylic is plastic. Don't forget, acrylic is plastic. So you don't want to trap moisture between the, la the layers. So if you've, got a, if you've got a damp gesso and you put a layer of acrylic on there, there's a possibility that that dampness could impede the, the paint film. So be very careful. Make sure your gesso is completely 100% dry. Better be safe than sorry. So um, there you are. Um, what we need to do now is get our paint scraper. Um, I'm, I'm just going to flatten down the surface and take any excess gesso off and put it back into my pot. It's as simple as that. Now that's going to make a nice smooth surface. It's going to push that gesso right into the grain of that canvas. And that is going to be like glass when I'm finished. And I do this several times when I'm doing a portrait. I really do. So each layer gets painted on, smoothed off, and then dried. And then I start the process all over again. And I sand in between each coat just to make sure I get a nice smooth finish and that's all you need to do that's all you need to do as far as prepping a canvas is concerned um, either for a very smooth finish or just for a normal painting it's as simple as that so I hope that's helped okay so I'm going to go along now and have a look at the chat and see what's going on in the chat room <laughs> So um, I worked out um, for a time priming boards, signs there wasn't a lot to it. They put on the belt, washed with acetone and the paint ma machine and into a large drying machine in a dirty metal shed. Yes, Jeffrey. Um, I've seen I've, I've seen uh, how these things are actually a lot of the primers are just sprayed on and then dried into a kiln. Um, gessos, I'm not sure if the gessos are actually rolled on or something. I'm not sure or they could be sprayed. It all depends on the calcium, on the chalk they actually use. I'm just going to get the, um, I want to get the next video up and running in a minute. Because I did say that I was going to do a, um, a video on how to make uh, gesso. And I don't, for some reason, I seem to have lost that. Where is it gone? No. I've lost my video, I've lost my video, but I will find it, don't worry, there we go, we have got that all up and running, hey I'm getting pretty good at this now, I'm getting pretty good at these live shows, yes I got, I got 10 fingers and 10 toes trying to press all these different buttons, <laughs> so um, okay, 
next thing, next thing, next thing is um, I want to talk about uh, Jesso itself, actually. Um, let's have a look if I can find my notes. Where did I put my notes? I tell you what, I am not very organized tonight. I had this all working perfectly a minute ago and I got notes everywhere and I don't know where things are. But I tell you what I'll do while I'm looking for that. I am going to put on this. I'm going to put on this video um, of how to make some clear gesso and um, have a bit of fun with this one and uh, see if you can make your own clear gesso and save yourself some money. And um, I also want to explain what clear gesso is. I've got some, um, actually, one that I made earlier. Um, there we go. So this this is actually clear gesso. But you you can see it doesn't actually look clear. But it does dry clear. So all that is basically is resin and marble dust. Now, when that's painting on the surface of your canvas like this, you, know, you can you can paint this on any canvas it'll actually dry clear so there's no pigment in it basically so it's just going to dry clear and you can hear that the rough texture on there but the good thing about this is you can actually add a little bit of acrylic gesso which is a clear gesso you add a little bit of that to a to a container like that there we go well, i'm just going to do this as a small sample and then you can get some paint let's say for instance in this instance we can put a bit of red in there uh, he says, come on, there we go, put a little bit of red in with our clear gesso and then mix that around like that. So now you've got a coloured ground. So when that's actually painted onto the surface of a canvas, it's obviously in this case going to go red. So you can use any colour, small amount. One of these pots will do quite a size canvas. So that acrylic clear gesso, not only is it, is it good as a clear gesso, which means you can you can paint over a pre-ground canvas and you've still got that roughness there. You can actually mix paint to it as well. So that'll give you a, a colour ground. There you go. And you can just paint that. I'm not going to do it in, in this instance. You can just paint that um, onto a canvas and... That's going to give you a nice, nice, nice rough texture to paint to. So if that's something you want to do, that's great. So that's going to take me on to actually making this acrylic clear gesso. So we need to put our pot onto our scales and tear the scales. Let's just put this one one side because I don't want to waste that. I'm going to be using that in the lesson. And we're going to need to get our pure resin that's the one liter bottle and as i said in the previous um, video um, i might pack these in a couple of bottles in fact because just to save some space because these big bottles are quite um quite big so we need to pour 150 grams into that pot now this clear gesso is going to last you a long time and if you're going to buy this in the shop, this would be around about a 12 to 15 pound mark. So it's 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 quite expensive, in fact. So we've got roughly, roughly 150. Okay, so I'm having, I don't know why I'm having a, a few problems with the sound here this evening. Um, maybe it's just a glitch somewhere. But what I'm saying is um, what I've used there is a pure resin. Um, this resin um, that you can... You can buy on the shop if you want to, but you can use just PVA glue um, or school glue or carpenter's glue or um, or something like that. You can use talcum powder if you want to. I wouldn't recommend using talcum powder, but uh, you can put some calcium carbonate or just chalk in there. Um, you use some gypsum or some polyfiller. Um, and, and basically, it's all the same thing. Um, all you're doing is putting chalk into a carrier like uh, PVA glue. That's going to go on onto your canvas and then it's just going to dry out. So... Yeah, I do apologize for the sound issues I'm having this evening, but hopefully now I've corrected it. And if there is any problems, just let me know on the comments because I am monitoring them 
So um, I'm thank you very much for letting me know. And I just realized I've still got the same jumper on. <laughs> so we're going to need um, to pick up our number two, which is the CLV5HO. We're now going to need to put in roughly... Ten grams on the scale of that, and we get it with stirring stick, and then we mix that together like this. There we go. We mix that together. All that is doing is just adding a little bit of retardation to it. Retardation? Are we just retard a little bit. <laughs> retardation it's my welsh so we just retarded it a little bit with that stuff and there's other stuff in there there's it's a mixture of different things so it's going to help it flow it's going to retard it slightly and um, it's also going to thin it down slightly so that's that now we're going to need to put in some um marble dust so this one bag of marble dust and as i said please use your safety equipment uh, please use your gloves and your mask and your goggles when you use this, because that is important. And just tear your scales. So we're going to put about 50 grams of this in. I found out 50 grams is about the right. If you want it slightly rougher, then you add a little bit more. If you want it slightly smoother, you add a little bit less. But I found about 50 grams of marble dust seems to work quite well for this. So it's only approximations. This is not an accurate science as far as making stuff yourself is concerned. It's just just as long as it's around there. there you are. I put 53 in there, so but I know that's fine. And then all we do then again is mix that in really well. I'm right handed, so I'm gonna have to change my hand. So we're gonna mix that in with that. And when you come to use this, um, what I suggest you do is always, always give it a stir or a shake before you actually use it. Because what's going to happen is the marble dust is going to settle. And um, we don't want that. So always, always stir it. It's always handy to stir gesso or shake gesso, whatever container you've got it in, basically. Now what I'm going to do now is I want to slightly thicken that up. So I'm picking up my, my pipette. And I'm going into number three. This is the little bot bottle number three what this stuff is it's it's a thickening agent and it's in liquid form and we can go in and put in one two three four five six seven eight nine ten little ten little drops ten little drops at number three and again we give that a lovely stir okay as you can you see, see um to the side there i've got three different main um calcium carbonates i got chalk i got uh, champagne chalk and uh, what i wanted to say is that um what you'll find there is a slight color variation between these three things calcium carbonate ores can be found in two of the three major types of rocks you've got sedimentary and metamorphic sedimentary rocks from sediments uh, that are uh, transported fragments deposited in in water um, and limestone uh, for examples um, things uh, inorganic remains such as shells and skeletons uh, metamorphic rocks such as marble slate quartz um, from when the rock is uh, subjected to a mass or great heat and pressure um, and other elements like magnesium and iron can affect the whiteness or hardness of a specific gravity of this type of stuff so um, chalk basically um, as you can see this is calcium carbonate uh, and I don't know if you you can see, but it's a slightly grayer color. Oh, there's a bit of pink in there, but that's off my skin and my hands. It's a slightly different, it's, it's a slightly grayer color. So it's a heavier, heavier in mass, uh, this calcium carbonate. It's just basically chalk. Um, and this is used in animal feed as well and, and, and other things as well. So um, marble dust is basically a very fine white granular powder. It's a bit more gritty and... Um, 
both of these are going to need some sort of uh, white pigment to them like titanium oxide or um, some sort of household emulsion paint if you're using a PVA method where it is um, traditionally um, gesso is made with um, champagne chalk or white in as it's called and this is a big part of it there we are that is that is actually white in um, and that is very very pure um, if you if you put your hand in there and you rub it between your fingers you can see hopefully that is staining my skin so it's, it's already got a, a, a like a, a pigment type of feel to it and it's a very 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 fine like um like talcum powder but it's not talcum powder it's a, it's a french chalk from the champagne region in france and um there you go whoops where we are so um there's three different types but you can get away with just ordinary um chalk you should be able to get that on ebay without without any problems at all so if you want a little bit thicker you add a few more drops and you just add those drops i would say go five at a time until you get to the thickness of this as you want now you can either have it like a cream or you can have it like a paste it's entirely up to you but i would suggest you keep it to quite a fluid uh, mix a bit like a runny paint and that's all you really need to do as far as making your own acrylic clear is concerned uh, gesso and over 12 hours this is just going to thicken a little bit more so this stuff that we put in though in there those 10 little drops of number three that's going to take 12 hours to actually work on the resin because it works on a chemical basis and it takes about 12 hours to actually thicken that up a hundred percent so don't over thicken it so i'm trying to say to you because it was it will continue to thicken over 12 hours but if you wanted to use that straight away you can it's not a problem so all i do then is i put the lid on that i give it another little shake and then i'll store that away on a shelf somewhere keep it in a nice keep it in a nice cool area and that'll last you for about two to three years or however long it takes you to use it there you go and that's how you make acrylic clear gesso well, that's, there's loads of uses for that so i'll see you on that one Bye. attention to health and safety it's very important that you use a dust mask or respirator some safety goggles and some gloves when you mix in fine pigments or powders like the pure marble dust it can get airborne and please do not smoke drink or eat around this stuff it is safe as long as you follow those precautions and um, but once it's mixed with the resin or water or whatever you mix this with whatever suspension you mix that in it is purely purely safe then you can take your gloves off if you want to okay so i just want to have a quick look at the chat that's going on here vanessa says thanks angela but if oh it's okay i don't know what the question was <laughs> you you don't need you don't really need to gesso so your canvases if you don't want to if you feel that the canvas or the canvas panel that you're using is um okay and you're happy to do that then go ahead and do that i just like to wear it on the side of caution peace basically that's all i need to do um yeah um what is he mixing into the chalk well i mix in a, a resin in that particular one and um um dj foster there'd be no problem without jester okay thanks um what uh wave wave rain uh yeah i'm mixing gesso and um pva glue or or gesso and resin that's all you need to do in that fact um I'm new to using gesso. I can, as far paintings I've done before hasn't flaked, but it would be nice to prepare the canvas. Yeah, um, in many cases, in many cases that um, you won't have a problem. Um, I'm not saying you will um, in any way, shape, or form, but there's a possibility it could happen. And if it's anything like my luck, um, it's one of the paintings that that I've I've spent a couple of weeks on, and it's looking really nice. And I go back in in a fortnight's time, and it started to peel away because I didn't prepare the surface properly. But it's it's a precautionary thing. Um, if you feel, as again, just to reiterate, if you feel again that um, it's 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 not for you, then it's okay not to gesso. But it's good to know the information just in case. And what could happen if things go wrong? 12 hours this is just going to thicken a little bit more so this stuff that we put in though in there those 10 little drops of number three that's going to take 12 hours to actually work on the resin because it works on a chemical basis and it takes about 12 hours to actually 
thicken that up a hundred percent so don't over thicken it so I'm trying to say to you because it was it will continue to thicken over 12 hours but if you wanted to use that straight away you can it's not a problem so all I do then is I put the lid on that I give it another little shake and then I'll store that away on a shelf somewhere keep it in a nice keep it in a nice cool area and that will last you for about two to three years or however long it takes you to use it there you go and that's how you make acrylic clear gesso that's, there's loads of uses for that so i'll see you on that one Bye. attention to health and safety it's very important that you use a dust mask or respirator some safety goggles and some gloves when you're mixing fine pigments or powders like the pure marble dust it can get airborne and please do not smoke drink or eat around this stuff it is safe as long as you follow those precautions and um, but once it's mixed with the resin or water or whatever you mix this with whatever suspension you mix that in it is purely purely safe then you can take your gloves off if you want to Okay, so um, I'm just going to have a look at the. Um, I'm just going to have a look at the chat, and everything seems to be going pretty well. So I hope that's answered a lot of questions. If you've got any other questions, just leave comments in the comments below, and send me an email. Um, Wave Rain says hi again. Would you please put the ratio down of resin to chalk and water? Thanks, Wave. There's recipes in the i cards. All you need to do is click in there, and um, I will be putting the 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 recipes down below in the descriptions when um, I get these done. So um, I hope everything is um, looking okay your end. There has been a few technical issues with sound, but I do apologise. But that's the joys of life. That's the joys of life. I've got a fantastic lesson coming out on Monday. Uh, it's where I'm actually painting a Vincent van Gogh painting, as you can see. You should be able to see behind me, but there. Um, also, I've made all the range of paints that Vincent van Gogh used in his painting. I made them by hand. Um, so I've got the right colours, or well, sort of the right colours, but they're very, 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 very close to the original colours. Because don't forget, I'm painting in acrylics not oils so there is a big difference there so um yeah have a little look if you think that you need to gesso then gesso if you don't want to gesso then don't there's no need to gesso um i just wanted to give you some help and advice um keep an eye out on the channel and um look for the notifications as well um we've got a good community going on in facebook which um I will be doing another live just going through the Facebook pages. So if you've got any questions you want to know, join us there. Um, but I would just want to say thank you very much for joining me in the studio tonight. I hope this little bit of advice has helped. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. And over by there is the support button for Patreon. Um, and just go along there for as little as a dollar a month. You can help support and help me make these videos. But um, until next week on Monday, I will see you. Uh, on the lesson. Bye.